The year 1989 was one filled with world-changing events. The Berlin Wall separating East and West Germany was torn down. San Francisco is hit with a massive earthquake that levels nearly 500 city blocks. The Exxon Valdez oil spill dumps 10.8 million gallons of oil into the Gulf of Alaska, making it the second largest oil spill in U.S. history. 89 was just a big year. It has events that you can find in U.S. history textbooks across the country. Country. But today I want to talk about an event that occurred in 1989 that's not some sort of big natural disaster or some major shift in world politics. It's a car giveaway hosted by VH1. Within every soul, there exists the need to be free. 44 tons of the best automobiles ever made in America. A sensation since inception, synonymous with style, the essence of freedom. In a word, Corvette. The prize package so big it will turn television upside down is coming to VH1. This is a story of a television sweepstakes of a scale that had never been before seen in TV history. In 1989, the VH1 network held a groundbreaking giveaway of 36 pristine Corvettes, one from each year of Corvettes history, from 1953 to 1989. The contest itself was the definition of hype, but it's what ended up happening to the Corvettes after they were given away that makes for a compelling story. These events transpired when the prize Corvettes fell into the hands of an artist named Peter Max, and this would lead to a nearly 25 year long mystery of the true whereabouts of the cars after they were given to this man. This is a wild goose chase of a story. This is the story of the VH1 Peter Max Corvettes. Before I go any further, I want to let you know this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. VPNs work to mask your IP address from websites so you remain anonymous online. This means that companies seeking to aggregate your browsing behaviors and sell it off to advertising companies will be SOL if you're surfing the web with a VPN, like ExpressVPN. The service allows you to mask your location with its servers found in 94 countries. This feature becomes invaluable when you consider some countries have firewalls that block certain websites. So with ExpressVPN, just change your location to a country that can access the website and the content will remain unrestricted. Personally, I don't like ad companies aggregating my internet browsing history and using it to target ads so I might buy their products. That seems a little bit intrusive if you ask me. And that's why I use and love ExpressVPN and I know that you're gonna love it too. The service is just $7 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee, so take back your internet privacy today. You can try it free for three months by clicking the link in the description box. That's www.expressvpn.com slash wavywebsurf, so get to clicking. On to the video now. In 1985, VH1 was created by Warner Communications in response to the massive success that MTV was having by airing large blocks of music videos as part of its programming. But within the first few years of VH1 being live, it was failing to pull the colossal ratings that MTV was garnering at the time. The channel just didn't have the word of mouth notoriety or recognizability than its competitor did. And if the channel continued to perform poorly, well, you know how it goes on TV, they were gonna get canceled. So the network knew that they had to do something big if they wanted to get attention of the viewers, something completely fresh and unprecedented. And this big new endeavor that VH1 would pursue was a massive sweepstakes put forth in 1989, which was the brainchild of freelance TV producer Jim Cahill. His idea was to hold a Corvette giveaway. This giveaway would be consisted of one car from every year of Corvette's three and a half decade history. The network had faith in Jim's idea and would fork over the $610,000 needed to purchase the legendary collection of 36 Corvettes to be given away at the sweepstakes. To have a chance at the Corvettes, entrants would have to call a hotline and pay $1.50 to enter. And this sweepstakes was unlike anything ever before seen on television. It became such a sensation that national news was covering the giveaway itself. Close to 190,000 people would call to enter on the first day with a total of 1.3 million registering by the time the contest was over. VH1 made its money back from purchasing the vehicles in less than two weeks. 
The overall awareness of VH1 as a network spread and ratings soared during the time of the sweepstakes. It was a massive success for the network. Now let's talk about the winner of the sweepstakes himself. The rules of the giveaway gave no limitations to how many times you could enter the contest, so you could imagine people were putting dozens upon dozens of entries into this thing. But astonishingly, the winner was a carpenter from Long Island named Dennis Amadeo, who won the $610,000 of Corvettes with just one single entry. And after winning, well, he was met with just complete fanfare. He would fly to California and was given the nearly five pound bag of keys by ex-beach boy Mike Love in a ceremony in Culver City. VH1 would then ship all the Corvettes back to New York City where Amadeo was living at the time. But the story doesn't end here because after the Corvettes were given to Amadeo, shit starts getting a little convoluted and a little bit confusing. But Bear with me, cause it's a pretty interesting tale. With the hype and buzz still surrounding VH1's giveaway, there would be a lot of interest overall in what's gonna happen to these cars now. Just one year after the Corvettes were given to Dennis Amadeo, a development would come forth. Enter Manhattan-based artist Peter Max. At the time, Peter Max was an established artist and key proponent in the 1960s psychedelic art movement. An interesting credit that he has under his belt is painting one of the designs for Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s iconic Monte Carlo. But despite his foray into Monte Carlo painting, Peter Max is by no means a car buff. This, however, wouldn't stop him from wanting to seek out the winner of the VH1 Corvette collection and offer to buy them wholesale. But what would this career artist want with a collection of 36 Corvettes? Well. This is why. It all starts with the dream that Peter Max had one night. Peter Max claims that his inspiration for wanting to buy the car was to facilitate a massive art project and he had to have them for this art project to work. Here's his quote of him describing this dream. I was in the bleachers at a football game and suddenly these Corvettes come out of the tunnels. Each of the cars had a cheerleader on the back waving pom poms he said and the whole stadium screams, they're the Peter Max cars. I've never had such a powerful dream. After this dream, Peter Max knew he had to have the Corvettes, and he would go on to get in touch with the winner of the contest himself, Dennis Amadeo. Mr. Max invited Mr. Amadeo to his Spaces studio near Lincoln Center in Manhattan, and Max explained to Amadeo that he desired to purchase the Corvettes for the facilitation of this art project that he dreamed about. He further explained the art project would hinge on the fact if he could get some investors, but he had a lot of confidence that he would be able to get someone interested in going forth with this rather ambiguous art project that he had proposed. Mr. Amadeo, the winner of the VH1 cars, was more so intrigued at having a lump sum of cash rather than a collection of cars, so he was all ears for selling them. The two would end up striking up a deal. Peter Max would purchase the cars for $250,000 in cash, Cash, another $250,000 in artwork, and a percentage of the proceeds if he sold the cars at a future date. With the deal in writing and Peter Max handing over the $250,000 in cash, the cars would be shipped to an undisclosed garage somewhere in New York City. Those who were following the story of the VH1 Corvettes were intrigued at Peter Max's promises of this fantastical art project he had proposed, with fantasies of the glorious vehicles blazing their way onto some sort of football or baseball stadium for a halftime show spectacle. But as the years went by, updates on the project from Peter Max came fewer and far between and eventually ceased. This raised speculation as to what was really happening to these cars and if Peter Max was full of crap. Surely a collection of Corvettes held with such high esteem was destined to be displayed to the public rather than to be sitting in some undisclosed garage left on Sully. Car buffs, however, remained optimistic that perhaps Peter Max was taking his time with the project or making some time-intensive modifications to the vehicles and eventually the day would come where he would again display the cars in some massive spectacle that rivaled the contest they were debuted in back in 1989. But in 2005, the fears that Peter Max had just been leaving the vehicles to rot 
happened to be the case. A writer from the New York Times claimed that he had visited some New York City garage and had seen the Peter Max Corvettes themselves and included a picture of one of the Corvettes looking in rather poor condition. However, he was anonymous about the location of this garage. But apparently this parking garage that the Corvettes were located in was accessible to the public and a member of the internet forum DigitalCorvettes.com would do his own handiwork and discover the cars himself. And what he found shocked and disgusted car buffs who had held this collection in almost godlike statuses. The cars were covered in dust, many of the tires deflated, the vehicles not started or serviced in decades. It seemed clear that no art project was being developed. Peter Max had left the collection to rot. This is a quote from the DigitalCorvettes.com member that discovered the Peter Max Corvette garage. Check this out. Once I opened the gate and stepped inside, it was like stepping back in time. It was as if the world around us was non-existent. It was surreal. I wasn't sure what to think at first. I just squeezed between the cars parked bumper to bumper, some touching the car in front or behind. I had never seen so much dirt and dust in my life. Walking by each car, I noticed that on the driver's seat was a single sheet of paper with the captions, year, make, model, description. The handwritten ink on each page was faded to the point that it became unreadable. As I stood there in the middle of history, I just wondered why. Why would anyone just leave these American icons uncared and unloved? After the Digital Corvettes forum member discovered that these cars were just left in completely terrible condition, some outrage on the internet surely followed. This left the community in outrage with members offering free auto upkeep to Peter Max. And despite countless offers and attempts to reach out to Peter Max about the state of the seemingly abandoned collection, Peter Max remained silent. The cars would remain in this garage for another five years until they mysteriously vanished sometime in 2010. And this prompted even more outrage from internet car buffs resulting in numerous emails to the brainchild of the giveaway, Jim Cahill, begging Cahill to reach out to Peter Max and inquire the whereabouts or plans for the Corvettes. Cahill was able to correspond with Peter Max but was only able to disclose the fact that Max had still had vague plans on doing something with the cars but was awaiting financial backing. Not a very reassuring statement from those invested in this situation. It seemed at this point that the cars were doomed to a cycle of parking garage neglect, but this didn't stop the Digital Corvette members from continuing their never-ending quest of tracking down and rescuing the Corvettes. Not just three days later, after the Corvettes had been moved, they were discovered again in another New York City garage, and this time several photos were taken showing the Corvettes had suffered serious body damage, even furthering angering those invested in the VH1 Corvette story. People just couldn't believe that a collection of such high esteem was being treated in this way. It seemed that the collection of Corvettes would be left to rot, their greatness never truly being realized or appreciated by its owner. But there is a happy ending to this story because in 2014, Peter Max finally decides to auction off his Corvettes and get them out of this decrepit dungeon of a home that they've been in for almost like 25 years. The entire 36 car collection of the Peter Max Corvettes Corvettes was sold to the Heller and Spindler families, who convinced Max to sell them for an undisclosed price. The new owners vowed to restore all the vehicles and put them up for another auction at a later date when they were up to ship shape. Photos exist online of the vehicles being refurbished, and the restoration work is being held under the watchful eye of Corvette aficionado Chris Mazzilli. Once all the cars are refurbished, Heller plans to sell the cars in an entire collection similarly to how they were given away as a collection but it seems like for now the legendary Peter Max Corvettes are finally in caring hands. In a fun fact here, Chris Mazzilli allowed Jerry Seinfeld to use the 1956 Corvette from the Peter Max collection in an episode of that comedians and cars drinking coffee thing. So, and another fun fact, Peter Max is facing a million dollar lawsuit because he didn't pay the auctioneers who sold his vehicles a commission fee. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much the story of the legendary VH1. Peter Max Corvette collection. Let me know what you thought about the video below in the description box. Oh wait, comment section. Can't mess that up twice in a row. But yeah guys, I'll see you in the next one. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and all that good stuff. Major shout out to my patrons. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace. What fit?
fitting weather.